Hello, my name is Bob Sykes. I'm the Director of Sales for Heat Controller. And what I'd like to do is show you how we use our calculator to fill out the bill of materials for a small duck high velocity heating and air conditioning system. If you've not done any small duck high velocity systems, I strongly recommend that you get a copy of the installation and operating manual. And you can do that from my website at heatcontroller.com. You need to review it. I mean, these systems are significantly different than what we're traditionally doing in large duct systems. We're doing systems at about 250 CFM per ton. Compared to large duct systems, we're doing about 400 CFM per ton. And even if you've done some other manufacturer's small duct system, it's a good idea to review because we do a few things different than other companies. Now, the first consideration when we're doing a small duct system is the plumb layout. And the I&O manual is going to help you decide you know, what's the best layout for your particular job? Horseshoe, perimeter, H pattern, etc. So once we've determined that, we need to figure out then what is the distance between the plenum and the actual outlet of the register. It's going to have a significant impact in the out CFM output of each one of the registers. For example, a short run, in this case say a three foot run at two inch uh, flexible duct, we can put out about 35 CFM, whereas on a 20 foot run of 2 inch, we're only going to put out about 28 CFM. And we need to determine exactly how many CFM we're putting into the space to make sure we're getting the job done correctly. Flexible duct comes in two styles. One of them is what we call attenuator, which is used at the minimum of the last three feet of the supply run before it connects to the outlet of the register. You can use up to 12 feet, and it comes in 12 foot sections. The other style is a flexible aluminum, so when we get into applications where our runs are longer than 12 feet, then from the plenum to the attenuator piping, we're going to use flexible aluminum. So once we've determined we're going to do this system, and we understand what the load is on the house, in this case, let's say we have a 3-ton load, we're going to put in a 3-ton system. As you can see, this thing is designed for ton and a half up through 5-ton applications. The left hand side is basically a ladder that's going to take you through the process of picking out the materials you're going to use on the job. Two options on the unit itself. One of them comes with a DX coil, which is what we would use on a traditional condensing unit or heat pump, and the other one used for a chilled water coil. Now typically we're using most of the jobs we're going to be using DX, so let's put a one in there. And you notice that it also pulls up a supply adapter that we're going to be needed on that. Next item would be we're going to need a secondary drain pan. Certainly at any time we were doing a job with an attic application, we're going to need a drain pan. If it uses a hot water coil, we need a 27C. But in this case, we're not going to use that, so we'll just use a 27B drain pan. We have the option of adding electric heat to these, these systems, so we can do it from 2 to 15 kW on a 3-ton system. So let's put in a 10 kW. And you notice it also picked up the adapter off of that also and eliminated the one above. Okay, so we're not duplicating that. We have the option of adding a hot water coil to that. We're not going to do that since we're going to do electric heaters. The next thing to consider is what's our return air. We can do a return air module, which is basically a box which allows us to pull return air from multiple rooms. The other option is if we're going to use a return air box. and Let's do that in this case. As you can see, it pulls up the three pieces that's going to be required. First one is the adapter, which goes onto the unit, uh, our flexible duct, and then the return air box with the filter. Now, the next step is probably the most critical. It's going to tell us, you know, what is the duct design that we're going to have to use on the system. So we look at it and say, okay, I'm going to need eight outlets that are uh, less than 10 feet for the job. I'm going to have uh, eight outlets that are 10 to 15 feet from our plenum design, and then I'm going to have eight outlets that are between 15 and 20 feet. Okay? That was back from that design where we looked at the plenum and where the individual registers are going to be located. Now what we've done here is we've said from that calculation we're going to have a total CFM output of the system of 756 CFM, which is perfect. Remember we're going to do 250 CFM per ton. That means we've got a, a lo cooling load on this system of 3.03 .03 tons. Ideal situation. We need 24 outlets. Okay, we come over here to the right hand side and we look at it. And outlets for two inch, we can do a kit which includes seven outlets with uh, an insulation factor of 
3.3. So we say, okay, I need 24. I could do three outlets of seven, which is going to give me a, a total of 21. And then I can come back and do three individual ones. And the individual kits come with the attenuator pipe as part of the package. So here's my 24 outlets. Covers my need. Down below here, it says that I need an additional 120 feet of 2-inch duct. Now remember, our attenuator piping is only 12 feet. And we've got runs that are in excess of 12 feet. In fact, I typically cut it off at 10 feet so that I make sure we've got plenty of little extra pipe there. So it says we need an additional 120 feet of 2-inch. In this case, we're going to use 2-inch flexible aluminum. We come over here and our, these are available in 100-foot uh, packages so we're going to need two of those gives us 200 feet and we've completed the system here's our total bill of materials here's our net cost always be sure that you check the latest pricing in case your uh, software program is not up to date on pricing in case there's any adjustments so make sure that's correct now one of the nice things about the system is we can uh, also have the capability using a different size we could use a two and a half inch the benefit here is that we can do a little more air out of the two and a half than we can out of the two. So let's reset this. And we'll get rid of the all of the two inch duck. And just to give you an example, a single run of two inch is going to give me an out thirty five CFM, whereas a two and a half inch it's going to give me 45. So let's say we have a job that we really don't want to put that many outlets in it. I uh, don't have the space or don't think aesthetically it's going to look good. We can come back and say let's put in uh, seven of the less than 10 and six of the 10 to 15, six of the uh, uh, 15 to 20. In this case, we actually got more CFM than we want, maybe a little more than we should have. So let's change one of those. Uh, still gives us pretty close to what it ha would be. Probably an ideal situation. Probably pretty close right there. We're looking for about 750. We're at 774 CFM, 3.1 tons. Means we got a, a uh, nice slow uh, velocity on all the registers, but plenty of CFM to satisfy the job. You'll also notice we reduced the number of outlets from 24 down to 19. So let's come again. We have to take that information, bring it over, and look at our system. In this case, we're going to look at uh, two and a half inch outlet kits. They come in packages of five. Probably in this case, we'd be better off if we just ordered four of those, which would give us 20 outlets. Covers the 19. Down here, we need 100 feet of extra piping in two and a half inch. We can order them in 25 foot and 75 foot uh, packages, so 125 and 175, and we've got our system designed and laid out. You can use a combination of two and two and a half. It doesn't make any difference. Now, if you've got a market that requires a higher R value than 3.3, .3, you can come back and look at the two and two and a half inch uh, specifications. You can see we can supply. 4.2, 6.0, or 8.0 insulation, both on two and two and a half. All the information on each individual product is available in these uh, bottom tabs. So we've designed the system. We're going to make sure that we got enough CFM. We can make sure we got the right bill of materials for the job, and the contractor can do the job in one uh, one visit. Well, I hope this helped you. If you uh, need additional information, please check my website. Again, it's heatcontroller.com or contact us directly and we'll try to help you. Thank you very much.